Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm in a place called Rotenbach, which is a district of Wolfberg in the Allgäu region of southern Germany. The church you can see behind me is rather unusual in as much as it has a fresco in which appears both Winston Churchill and Adolf Hitler. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in this film. This is the parish church of St. Jacobus Maior, or St. James the Great, to give it its English title. It is located in Rotenbach, which is a district of Wolfegg in the Allgäu region of southwestern Germany. Let's go inside and have a look at its rather interesting fresco. The fresco was financed and donated to the church by Anna and Friedrich Roesch from Bursches near Rotenbach, who commissioned it in memory of their only son, Georg, who died on the 26th of December 1942 in the battles around Stalingrad. In 1944, August Braun took at least one month to complete the painting, for which he was paid 4,000 Reichsmarks a considerable sum at a time when an industrial worker could expect a weekly wage of around 30 to 40 Reichsmarks and a soldier at the front even less. August Braun was born in 1876 as the youngest of three children of the doctor Josef Braun in Wangen in Allgäu. He painted at least 50 secular and ecclesiastical buildings in Upper Swabia and the Allgäu. In other works, he also mixed biblical with contemporary ideas. This is the fresco. At the centre of the fresco is a cross with the body of Christ enthroned on a cloud, above which God the Father and Holy Spirit are depicted in the shape of a dove. The cross is surrounded by a multitude of floating cherubs and angels. If we look to our left, we have Notburger, a Tyrolean peasant saint who is kneeling with her hands together. Next to her, taking her confession, is Johannes Baptista Sproll. Johannes Baptista Sproll was an anti-Nazi bishop, a former member of the Constituent Assembly of Württemberg for the Centre Party. Sproll preached against the National Socialist from at least 1934. His abstention from the referendum on the annexation of Austria on the 10th of April 1938 led to an investigation and to demonstrations organised by the Nazis against him. On the 23rd of July 1938, Sproul was ordered out of his diocese. He was expelled to Krumbad near Gunzburg, which did not stop him preaching against Nazi hatred and he attacked the events of the Night of Broken Glass. On the 19th of September 1939, he made positive comments about Jews and their religion. On the 1st of August 1940, Archbishop Konrad Gruber from Freiburg and Vicar General of the Diocese of Rottenburg, Max Kottmann, protested on behalf of Sproul about the murders taking place at Grafenek of the mentally and physically challenged. Nonetheless, Sproul called for people to fight in the war and, if necessary, to die courageously for their Führer and fatherland. Next to the bishop, we see St. George with a lance and what appears to be a dead or at least immobile dragon. Either that or it is a winged dog. August Brown may have chosen St. George, who shared a name with that of the fallen son of the client. Next to them is a family with a small child. Another group of women and men follows below this group. The good Beth, Elizabeth Ackler, 
a local mystic from the Middle Ages. Next to her stands a Sister of Mercy in religious dress, Saint Vincent de Paul, Saint Francis and Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus. The Apostle Paul is portrayed as having the face of the artist August Brown. In this way, August Brown identified himself as being a friend of the church and as one of those standing on the right hand of God and as thus somebody who will get into heaven. On the same level, we find Pope Sylvester I, the evangelist John, Simon Peter and James the Great, after whom the church was named. In the New Testament, James was one of the twelve apostles of Jesus. On our right, and thus on the left side of God, are the enemies of the cross. At the top, there are three men and a woman. They represent war profiteers. They are dressed in black suits, tails, evening gowns, and hold champagne glasses in their hands. Below them, we come to Adolf Hitler. He is wearing black nickel glasses, which was quite a lucky guess. Hitler did wear glasses, although there are only three photographs that I know of showing him in them. I don't think any of these photographs ever appeared in the German press at the time, although people who had access to Hitler would have known that he had weak eyesight, and indeed he had a special typewriter with larger letters so that he could read it. He is in a blue suit, which he wore to formal and business occasions before the war, and is characterised above all by his moustache. More easily recognisable, Winston Churchill stands next to him with a cigar. With his back to Hitler and Churchill is a man absorbed in a newspaper in Hebrew script. Below the two, you can see two younger men with flat caps. This, I think, represents the industrial working class, or maybe communists. At the bottom, in a biblical group, Judas Iscariot with the 30 pieces of silver and other people, perhaps members of the biblical Sanhedrin around the high priest Caiaphas, are shown. Can this fresco be seen as being passive resistance to the Nazi regime? Clearly, the painter would have been in very serious trouble had he been betrayed to the Gestapo. It could be argued that this is not Hitler at all, and perhaps looks more like Eamon de Valera than the Nazi dictator. As for Churchill, he was damned as far as the painter was concerned because he demanded unconditional surrender and had German cities bombed without hesitation. But why is Stalin not there? His absence must be seen all the more puzzling as the painting's sponsors donated the money in memory of their son who died on the Eastern Front. Or perhaps he is represented by the men in the flat caps. Furthermore, the negative portrayal of the Jews in the picture, not only those from biblical times, but the one who is reading the newspaper suggests a continuance of Catholic hatred for Jews that goes back more than 1,000 years. Brown's ceiling painting defames Judaism particularly extensively as the devil's auxiliary force. What is strange is that in recent years, and indeed years after the war, when resistance to the Nazis was seen in a positive light, that neither the painter nor his sponsors nor their family openly said that the fresco is a work of passive resistance. August Brown died in 1956 and thus had plenty of time to make the point clear. Indeed, it was many years later before anyone publicly noted that the figure standing next to Churchill was Hitler. As far as I could see, there's no mention of the fresco anywhere in or around the church. On the day of my visit, I was alone. I was left wondering how many parishioners have even noticed what exactly is in the fresco. I don't have a particularly strong knowledge of art, 
but I do know a little bit about World War II history. Maybe my artistic interpretation is not the best. However, I'd be interested to hear other opinions of this fresco and invite comments in the section below. Thank you very much for watching.